What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. I'm back today with my Unicore Golf Simulator setup. It consists of the Unicore IXO, that's their ceiling mounted golf launch monitor with dual high speed cameras and infrared, and I'm connected to their view software, but I also have my Unicore Swing Optics camera set up. So that's why there's so much light in here right now. We're gonna do a how to set up your Unicore Swing Optics cameras, but not just that. We're gonna dive into all kinds of things. So maybe even if it's another swing camera system that you're looking at, um, we're gonna talk about you know best practices, the how to get the best quality of video, you know, the hardware placement, lighting options, all kinds of different things. So stay tuned for the whole video. I think you're really gonna appreciate this. Even to talk about projectors and uh, you know the, the problems you could run into with projectors when you're doing slow motion video. Um, but first thing we need to do is take a shot and then we're gonna dive into everything. Now, if you guys are looking to build a Unicore home golf simulator or any type of home golf simulator or commercial golf simulator, make sure you shoot me an email. I'll pin it at the top of the comments and put it in the description. Been helping a ton of people. I wanna make sure you get what is gonna work for you and then also make sure you're getting the best pricing and information and everything. So um, that's what triggered this video. I had someone reach out recently and I've been talking to a lot of people. Unicorn has been having some sales and stuff and a uh, ton of people looking into different products. And one of them was talking about the swing cameras and said, you really need to do an updated video on this. I covered these when they first came out, but I've made some changes and, you know, tweaked some things. And uh, I probably have a lot more information than I was able to share at that time. So we're going to go over all that. Um, first thing first, this is the reason that I've been using these lately is because I have been working on my wedges. So um, let's call it a 70 to 80 yard shot or so approaching the green, um, having some troubles working with my coach, identified that I'm taking my wedge inside. All right. And I'm not taking it more up like he wants me to and exiting left. This is just me. You know, I'm your golf swings, your golf swing. But it's nice because I can take, you know, some shots and I can use the power U cloud and fire these videos over to him. So um, it's really nice. So I wanted to uh, kind of point that out to you guys. And that's what I figured I'd show you. Um, see if I can actually execute this shot as an example. And uh, we're going to go over all kinds of stuff. So let's just make a shot. All right. Not a bad shot. Pretty good spin, 76 yards, kind of just what I was talking about, uh, you know, taking there. And let's see what it looks like first off inside of the club video. So this is what I like looking at. So I like going in here first. I get to look at the impact. I get to look at the club delivery. So let's just go ahead and watch that club delivery. Still looks like it's coming maybe a little inside, but pretty square path right before I'm, I'm you know, hitting the ball. And pretty good delivery overall. I mean, I like what I see on this shot. Um, you know, it's the data that I would expect for a 75 yard shot. That's what I was trying to hit. Good spin, not a whole lot of side spin on this. Um, but here's where it really gets fun and I get to dive into things. So I'm going to go to the swing. All right. So here is a replay of that swing in slow motion. And I can just go ahead and let it play first. We'll just go through. We're going to talk about settings. We're going to talk about all kinds of things, but I just want you guys to see the shot first. All right. We'll pause it. I like how they have the orange dot. Now, why is that orange dot there? Well, that's because the Unicore launch monitor is actually telling the software where it saw the ball move, you know, the launch. So you have this orange dot automatically inside of it because the launch monitor is synced with the cameras, which is really cool. And I can look right at the impact of that. So, it, you know, it's, it does a really good job between capturing the amount of frames and the shutter speed being high enough to where no club blur. I can even see the club delivery from behind and face on. Uh, really, really nice to have all that. Now, how am I getting this in the quality you're seeing without club blur and everything else? Well, let's go back to the live view, all right, in the upper left, and I'll go to settings just to start off. Now, exposure, all right? I'm gonna step over and I'm gonna talk about exposure for a second. Exposure is probably one of the biggest issues I see out there that people cause you know, club blur and uh, you know, loss of quality of their cameras. So you really need a lot of light because the lower you can bring the exposure, the higher the shutter speed is going to be of this camera. These are global shutters, so that's how they work. Lower exposure, higher shutter speed. What is the difference? Well, frames per second is what a lot of people get stuck on. That's how many frames in the video it's capturing. So you saw there, every time it kind of clicked forward, that was a frame. But in order to take every frame and freeze the image, all right, versus it being blurry, that takes a very high shutter speed. 
In order to increase that, you have to lower the exposure as low as you can. Now, you'll notice my setting is as low as it can go. All right, now my image might not be as bright as some people like, but it's bright enough for me, and that's because I'm using all the light, and that's allowing me to lower the exposure and freeze those images. So if you want no club blur, and you want frozen images, you need to lower your exposure all the way in your settings, and that we are getting the highest uh, shutter speed you can to freeze the club, and it's all about light. Let's talk about light real quick. I'm using a very high power LED panel, video quality LED panel, so no flickering. That's key. You can't buy cheap LEDs where they flicker in slow motion. Get video quality LEDs. If you have questions on any of this stuff, just send me an email. Uh, I like the face on light being the most important in my opinion because that's where the most of your subject is getting hit by the light, even on the sides it's getting from that light. Some people can even get away with only a face on light. I'm in a very dark environment wearing dark clothes. So we're really kind of pushing the limits here. Um, and I do have one light in back kind of gives me some, uh, you know, auxiliary light coming from the back. It's nothing special. I can send you a link on that too. It's just like a ring light. Once again, it's a video quality light, so no flickering or anything. Um, but that's, what's going to be key. That's what's allowing me to lower the exposure all the way and get the uh, club to actually freeze in the images. Every frame is frozen the best it can. Now there's other settings you can do to brighten up your image. Things like gamma, all right? Now you'll see it gets very pixelated when you lower that down and it gets brighter. I find that somewhere in the middle, honestly, is gonna be plenty for most people. You can see you can kind of just play with that a little bit depending on what you want. Um, mine might be a little bit further right, you know, darkening it down, but it's, it's real close to the middle. Brightness is something I encourage people to use because, you know, even if the, it gets a little bit grainy, it's going to brighten the image up enough for you. And I don't mind grain. Grain is fine. You, you still get to see everything you need. And then contrast is another thing that you can use to kind of give you that, that defined, you know, uh, dark and light spots in your image. I hover around eight. All right. And so that's where this is coming from. So when we go into that replay, and this is what I also like, you'll notice that when this thing is playing in slow motion, we're at quarter speed right now. We'll just go right to where my kind of takeaway is. And I play this. I mean, sure, there's a little grain, but I mean, this is excellent. And then there's something I need to point out right away. Notice how I'm not getting any flicker from my projector. It's actually a DLP projector. Well, this is the LK936 ST. And this DLP technology they have inside of that, that's the result that I'm getting, no flicker. And I wanna talk about projector flicker really quick. If you wanna just avoid any type of image issue with slow motion video, all right, there's a few things you can do. You can do 120 frame per second slow motion video because that's going to get very close to the 60 frame uh, per second, if you want to call it that, um, 60 hertz, the refresh rate of the projector, and it's going to not have that flickering in it. Um, or you could buy a 3 LCD projector, which doesn't have any flickering. That's going to be flicker free. Um, or you could just do a setup like I have. This 936 is a DLP. You can see I'm not getting flickering. Some people just deal with the flickering. It's not that bad because you're focused on the subject. It's not about being able to see the image on the projector screen you know, for this slow motion video. So a lot to consider there. There's, there's some personal preference things. If you have questions on this stuff, let me know. Um, but yeah, I definitely want you guys to understand that, uh, you know, it's not a concern with this setup I have. So BenQ LK936 ST, it is a DLP. We're using swing optics. You saw my settings. And if I do a, a quarter replay, I mean, I may be getting some color wheel that I can see on the projector, but that's honestly it. I'll watch this all the way through real quick. And you can see, I mean, just a really good image. For being a dark room wearing dark clothes, I'm just very happy with this. I get to see that takeaway of the club. Am I taking it, you know, pushing it far enough back and high? I can send that over to my coach and say, is this far enough or have we not achieved what we need to achieve with this wedge? Um, and so he can take the video. We can draw lines on it. Um, you know, he might come in here and say, hey, look, I need you to stay right here, you know, above this line and I'm going under the line. I'm not a swing coach, so I usually don't get into any of this stuff. I leave that to the pros. Call your local PGA a professional. You know, some people come in here and they'll work on, hey, can I keep my head steady through the shot? You have all those drawing tools available, you know. Very cool to have all that. And I've shown all this in those other videos, but I just wanted you guys to at least, you know, have, if this is your first time watching the Unicor Swing Optics uh, overview, you get to see all that. 
you know you can obviously switch back and forth to you know your different you know views you can do pop outs now so if you wanted to throw the swing camera videos up on your uh, TV you know third monitor you can do that you can actually have your club video uh, on different monitors and you can pop out multiple of these as well so that's available to do if you want to uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of times I'll just be using just, you know, uh, one screen, no pop outs. It just depends. But um, I do want to talk about the distance of the cameras. This is a question that came up and, you know, I'll even measure them while I'm sitting here with you guys. That way we know for a fact I'm not second guessing, but I think this one is a little under six to the ball. A lot of times they tell you to measure to the hands of the subject not the ball but i feel that it's just easier for you guys to know your t position versus hands so like this is probably at about 69 inches from the let's see from the front of that camera yeah from the front of the camera it's actually probably only 67 or so 66 67 um and then to my hands obviously are farther back but at least you get to understand that for the unicorn camera i'm sitting on a little tripod just a cheap tripod from amazon that in that range where I'm sitting, you know, is right around 65, 66 inches to the ball. And then on the back, I just have it mounted to on my wall and using just a little RAM mount, which I can send you information on this as well. And coming off of that camera, it is about 78 inches to the ball. All right. So just under seven feet, just under six feet is the best way to look at that. Um, that's where mine are set up. You can adjust them um, to your liking. Um, but that should be a very good guide for most people to know that you can get a result like I'm getting right here. So um, I hope this gave a really good overview of everything for you guys. Um, like I said, I really wanted you guys to understand exposure and shutter speed and how that works and the difference between frames per second and all of that, um, how to achieve the best quality image and things to mess with. Um, get, that, get that exposure down as low as you can. Get some light on your subject. All right, that's going to be key. And then uh, other than that, where the cameras would be mounted if you're looking to do that. But if you guys have any questions on this stuff, like I said, make sure you shoot me an email up in the top of the comments and put it in the description. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming soon.